What have they done done to my my baby? baby? That was my reaction when I saw Modok in the Quantum Mania trailer. I am, after all, a diehard fan of the character, and I couldn't stand to see the MCU botch my favourite Marvel villain less than two years after they botched my second favourite Marvel villain. But now, having seen the movie, I've got to admit, even as a Modok purist, if there is such a thing, I'm actually pretty content with what we got. Let me explain. And there are spoilers from here on out. Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania reintroduces Corey Stoll as scorned inventor Darren Cross, who we learn was turned into MODOK by none other than Kang the Conqueror. This is a controversial move, at least among weirdos like me, as in the comics the original MODOK is an entirely different character, a scientist named George Tarleton who was forcibly transformed into a grotesque organism designed only for computing and later killing by his colleagues at AIM. He swiftly becomes the head of the organization, no pun intended. I don't love this new trend of Marvel Studios just slapping a character name onto somebody completely different. They also did this with Taskmaster, turning Tony Masters into Antonia Drakov. For the record, I am very happy for them to change the character's gender identity. In fact, there is already a female Taskmaster in the Marvel Multiverse, but they should have retained some of the basic personality traits that make the character who they are. Maybe that will happen when the MCU Taskmaster returns for the Thunderbolts movie, but we certainly haven't seen it yet, and that's quite disheartening. But this is the exact reason why I'm willing to give Quantum Mania's version of Modok a pass, because while the origin is drastically altered and there's a different person in the Doomsday Chair, the essence of the character is pretty spot on. Modok is bitter, spiteful, and constantly plotting revenge on his enemies. Modok is a genius, but has no self-awareness whatsoever, and often spirals into delusions of grandeur, regarding himself as the perfect killing machine. Modok has, on multiple occasions, shown a deeply repressed desire for human connection, with past comic book storylines seeing him fall in love with Thor's sister Angela and S.H.I.E.L.D. director Maria Hill. All these aspects combined with the extremely comics accurate design leads me to say Quantum Mania's MODOK is actually pretty authentic, but there is one thing that bugs me. In recent years, MODOK has increasingly been depicted as a joke character, and it's not hard to see why. I mean, look at him. Comic book artist Jack Kirby was, and still is, an absolute legend, who illustrated some pretty crazy stuff in his time on Earth, but I think this still stands as one of his strangest creations. However, I don't believe that MODOK has to purely be the butt of a joke. I point to stories like Alice Cott's Secret Avengers and Fred Van Lente's MODOK's Eleven, which acknowledge the zanier aspects of the character, while still depicting him as a genuine threat. Quantum Mania doesn't really get this balance right. I quite enjoyed the build-up to MODOK's grand entrance, where Krylar describes him in ominous terms as the Hunter, but he doesn't get much respect from then on. For crying out loud, they even show us his tiny naked ass, which is just not something I needed to see. I've always quite liked the idea of bringing MODOK to live action in a Cronenberg-style body horror story. In that setting, I think he could actually be quite terrifying, but they went the easier comedy route, and I can make my peace with that thanks to one killer moment. Quantum Mania is not a very funny film overall, despite desperate attempts to be, but one scene that actually got a big laugh out of me was Modoc's death. <laughs> I was bummed that they decided to kill him off, as the character was so well realised in a lot of ways, and I would have liked to see him get back to Earth and fulfil his destiny as AIM's Scientist Supreme. That said, at least his death was memorable. He had a moment of redemption in the battle against Kang, and went out with two of the funniest lines in recent Marvel history, telling Scott that he was always a brother to him, and saying, at least I died an Avenger. What a hilarious encapsulation of MODOK's complete obliviousness to his own situation. Props to Corey Stoll for his line delivery here, it really was perfect. And I'll even give writer Jeff Loveness some cool points too, despite the fact that the rest of the movie was largely garbage.
Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania is not a good film. In fact, it's a derivative CGI nightmare, but it has two bright spots, Jonathan Majors as Kang and Corey Stoll as MODOK. It's a shame that Marvel is still discarding most of their villains after one appearance, but with the multiverse bringing back characters left and right, there's a chance that this version of MODOK could return somewhere down the line. And I for one hope he does. This clearly unplanned comeback for Darren Cross worked better than it had any right to, and it would be great to see it continue, perhaps in a better story and one that takes him just a tiny bit more seriously. What did you think of Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, and particularly its version of MODOK? Let me know in the comments section below. Like the video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to Movies and Cool Stuff for more. See you soon.